Welcome back, everybody. For many, it's the trip of a lifetime. Each year, millions of Americans board a luxury cruise ship for a dream vacation. But sometimes they don't come home, and their families are often left high and dry without answers. Phil Keating's on the West Side Docks with the story. Phil. Geraldo, the Port of New York is the fourth busiest in the country for the cruise ship industry, and it is an industry that continues wildly popular growth. More than a million new people every year. This year, about 10 million people will spend their vacation on the high seas, but as we discovered, not everybody comes home. Some mysteriously vanish without a trace. Luxury cruise ships. These billion-dollar boats promise fun and relaxation on the high seas. But there's a deadly danger aboard these floating cities. Since the year 2000, 12 passengers have gone to sea and not come home. Six in the last year alone. Most famous among them, Connecticut wine merchant George Allen Smith, who disappeared off a Royal Caribbean ship July 4th while honeymooning with bride Jennifer Hagel. My heart breaks for Jennifer. The details surrounding Smith's disappearance are all too familiar to Connecticut mother Jean Scavone. Six years ago, almost to the day, her son James also vanished while on a Caribbean cruise. It's like part of your heart's been just cut out. You don't have any closure. You have no place to go. You don't bring flowers to a grave. There is no grave. 22-year-old Jimmy Scavone was fresh out of the University of Connecticut and looking forward to the fall semester at NYU grad school when he booked a trip aboard the Carnival cruise ship Destiny. He was well-liked. He was well-loved. He was a wonderful son. On the first night of the cruise, July 5th, while en route to San Juan, Jimmy joined several of his friends at the ship's disco. They met some other passengers, some young ladies they talked to, and some were dancing. And from what they told me, somewhere between 12 and 12.30, Jimmy said he had to go to the men's room. And he left. Jimmy was never seen again. He vanished. He vanished into thin air. A search of the ship the next morning turned up nothing. Just like in the George Smith case, James's bed also untouched. Gene called the FBI and agents boarded the ship in San Juan. That evening, the FBI told the distraught mother there was no foul play involved and that her son must have fallen overboard. To this day, I don't know what happened to my son. I have no idea. But do I think he just tripped and fell overboard? No, I don't. Gene says the cruise line itself, while at first empathetic, soon turned a cold shoulder. I tried calling um, the Miami office and I basically was was passed from one secretary to another secretary and another secretary and my distinct impression was we really don't want to hear from you again. That's it. And that was the end of it. At press time, Carnival Cruise Line did not provide us with a response to Gene's claim. Once uh, an adverse event occurs, the cruise line is more interested in protecting the purse than protecting the passenger. Attorney Charles Lipcon represents families of Americans lost at sea and warns not to rely on the FBI either. By the time they get to the ship, if the crime scene wasn't properly preserved or if the evidence wasn't properly gathered, then there's not a whole lot they can do. Outside of U.S. territorial waters, the FBI's involvement in these cases is often up to the country in whose waters the person disappeared. We just can't uh, go over there and take the investigation over. Um, there, there's a, many times a feeling that, that the uh, host country capabilities are, are, are there in an app. Leaving little recourse for mothers like Jean and the families of other victims who must live without ever knowing the fate of their most cherished loved ones. I really believe I've never mourned my son. Really said in my heart, Jimmy's dead and he's never coming back. And that's very hard. John Meisner's wife, Annette, disappeared.